You had said in June that you would give up the short once Tesla begins making money, and the predictions on that aren't until what? Later this year at the earliest, but analysts no, probably no, thinking no. second not half of 2018. Dec- not even later this decade. Okay. <laughs> um, so you don't see a turnaround uh, in the works here? Well, three years ago, Scarlett, this company was supposed to be making money now. And now, it's supposed to be making money by 2020. And I'm guessing, you know, by 2019, we'll hear about 2025. Um, this company is structurally unprofitable. Um, its capital structure is, is way too leveraged. It took on, let's not forget, it took on Solar City for $8 billion mm-hmm. in assumed debt and stock issuance. Solar City had negative EBITDA, earnings before interest taxes depreciation. So the, the drain to the shareholders on Solar City alone is about a billion dollars a year. So um, that's a big drain. That's a lot to absorb. Yeah. So obviously investors haven't punished the company for the extraordinary uh, losses because they're so into the Musk vision and they're so into the products and they think it's yep. going to change the world, yep. it'll be the next iPhone yep. or whatever. Is there anything that you could that could change your mind pre-profitability if it started to look like the Model 3 was really ramping up and they were selling and that it looked like they could scale that? Well, they need to ramp it up. I mean, it, it's it, nobody is buying Tesla stock based on sure. the current business, right? It's all based on the future and, and the hoped for uh, acceptance of, of half a million to a million Model 3s a year and then plus whatever is coming on uh, before that. But, but let me make an important point. I mean, one of, one of the reasons this company was successful and that Musk had an, a really vision ahead of everybody else was that he made electric vehicles sexy, right? The Model S was a sexy car. You drove was, the Model S, Yeah, right? I've, been, I've driven one. It's, they're, they're great. Um, it was aspirational. It was not a compromise, mm-hmm. right? And, and whereas most EVs have been a compromise, they're small little bug-like cars, and you feel good about driving one, but they're not really <laughs> aspirational. They're not cool. And he made it cool. And the problem he now has is, as we've seen in the last two weeks with the, uh, the Mission E rolled out by Porsche, in 20, which mm-hmm. will come out in 2019, is the competition is coming out with sexy sports cars and high-end vehicles. Um, they're putting their existing line, they're electrifying them, or in the case of Porsche, they're actually designing uh, from the ground up a, an electric vehicle that's a sports car. And this is going to be the reality by 2019. And, and that's, that's a different animal. You now have lots of competition. You have well-financed, profitable companies competing against you. And one more point. Um, Tesla's now behind in autonomous driving. Mm. And that's what a lot of people, again, have put these sort of stories like autonomy and mobility onto the stock. They're level two, same as GM. And GM, many observers believe GM's Cadillac um, autonomy, uh, autonomous features are better than Tesla's. Audi's now at three. Mm. And so they're not even the leader in, in these areas where they were a leader uh, as little as two years ago.